In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Giving thanks also should be all the time, as our Lord Jesus taught us. Let's see how we can put this into practice. Every morning, as soon as you open your eyes, say, thank you, God. Is it hard? Some people write it over the bed to remember. This shall remind you that God is the center of life, of your life, and that you owe him your day, not to mention the rest of your life. So start your day by giving thanks to God. When you go to sleep at the end of the day, the last word you say on your bed should be, thank you, God. It is easy to practice this at the beginning and the end of the day. And little by little, you will increase how many times you say it till you reach what David said in Psalm 119. Seven times a day I praise you because of your righteous judgment. Praise you means giving thanks. He was giving thanks to God seven times a day, not asking him to do something for him. Little by little, you will give thanks to God during the day. You will reach the point of waking up early to thank him. This is a little higher level, that is, waking up early specifically to give God thanks. David did this, saying, I rise before the dawning of the morning. And also, at midnight I will rise to give thanks to you. We might wait till the next morning. Why is David in such a hurry to give thanks? But we are beginners in thanksgiving. An even higher, more advanced level is giving thanks for hardship. When, when we know that everything that happens to us is the best thing that could happen, and when we love God and when we have faith in Him, we will find that whatever happens, we say, thank you, God. When love, faith, and humility grow, the immediate relax reaction in hardship is giving thanks to God. This is what Paul talked about when he said, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. The word here, glory and tribulations, means to meet the tribulations with thanksgiving. We don't just accept the tribulation, but we accept it with gratitude. Paul said the same thing another way in Romans 8. He said, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Yet in all these we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. In all these hardships we thank the Lord, for these are all good. As he said to give thanks always, he also said to give thanks for all things, which means to give thanks for every distinct thing. I will give you some examples of things we forget to give thanks about. The first thing is health. Give thanks for being healthy. And give thanks even in illness, because everything happens for good reason. Illness will get you closer to heaven and make you repent. The second thing to be thankful for is your home. The home and the people in it. The ones you don't like or the ones you resent. They are a blessing. And some people don't have people. Be thankful for life. Some people died at a young age. You're not better than them. But God has given you a blessing that you still have an opportunity. Be thankful for God's forgiveness. Every time you take the Holy Communion, it means that God forgave you again. Give thanks for His forgiveness. Every time you say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. When you say that, God forgives you. Wow, this is the truth. It is true that He forgave you, so give thanks. Be thankful for the church, which gives us teachings and sacraments and raising our children in a pure environment unlike that of the world. When someone goes to a country with no church, he knows the value of the church. We do not notice that we have the privilege to have a church near us that provides a holy environment full of prayer and love. Thank God for the ministry and the opportunity to serve the poor. We don't understand the value of such service. But when we go to heaven, we'll find a huge reward for just the little amount of energy we expended on others. If we actually understood the greatness of this reward, we would forget about all the silly stuff we seek in the world and would spend day and night serving others. So we should give thanks that God permitted us to serve, doing His work. Do we thank God for the Holy Bible? Whenever you want to hear God's voice, you can open the Bible and hear it. The Bible is a priceless treasure. Every word in the Bible can change your life and give you peace and bring you into heaven. 
Do you feel this grace? Do you give thanks for problems as they will bring the best for you at the end? Do you thank God for hardship? Do you give thanks even for failure? Failure is usually the beginning of success in God's hand. Finally, our church calls the Divine Liturgy a sacrifice of thanksgiving. The Divine Liturgy is a celebration of thanksgiving, a sacrifice of praise. There are people who pray in the Divine Liturgy without asking for anything. So why do they even come? They come to give God thanks and praise. Our meeting with God in the Divine Liturgy is basically a meeting of thanksgiving. Our requests are insignificant parts of it. We already know that our requests are answered. He will not forget us. Our main focus in the Divine Liturgy is thanksgiving. The Eucharist is a sacrifice of praise. In fact, the word Eucharist in Greek means thanksgiving. Psalm 116, I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. When I feel thankful, I take up the cup of salvation in the Eucharist. So how can we give thanks to God? There are many ways of expressing thanks. The first one is simply saying thank you, or glory be to you, or I love you, God, or any expression of gratitude. Talking with God a lot is a form of thanksgiving because you focus on Him. Talking about God is also thanksgiving. When someone talks about God, he does this with a feeling that he owes a lot to God. He goes to people and says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, like it says in Psalm 34. God appreciates, appreciates this because it is from a thankful heart. So whenever you are sitting with others and you are trying to turn the conversation toward God, he looks at you with appreciation and love and thinks, You, my son, feel for me. You love me and thank me because you always want to talk about me. So we can offer thanksgiving sort of in an indirect way. Expressions of thanksgiving can also be idiosyncratic. The woman who poured the perfume on our Lord Jesus invented her own way of thanking Jesus. She liked how she expressed her gratitude. She wanted to tell him, I love you, but she couldn't speak in this situation in front of the men and the apostles. But she brought a gift. She did not ask for anything. She just wanted to thank him. It is like some simple people in the villages who save some money and go happily to buy some incense for the church. They do it to express their joy and gratitude for the Lord. Also, serving God is an expression of thanksgiving. Praise is thanksgiving. Accepting pain is thanksgiving. Having pain without complaining is a kind of thanksgiving. Your efforts in prayer and fasting are a kind of thanksgiving.